Hare 
Paramansa Pari Prajakacharya Stotra Satasi Simad Bhakti Vidanta Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah. Anand Bhakti Vidanta Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Anand Bhakti Vidanta Saraswati Goswami Namacharya Shidhari Das Thakur Kijai. Prem Seka Ho Si Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Kijai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopina. Sham Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Kijai. Vrindavan Dham Kijai. Navadip Dham Kijai. Jamuna Mai Kijai. Ganga Mai Kijai. Tulsi Devi ki jai, Bhakti Devi ki jai, Samveta Bhakta Vrinda ki jai, Nitai Gaur Premanande. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Glories to Srila Prabhupada. So, as I mentioned earlier, yesterday was Gaur Purni. And the day after Gaur Purni is celebrated as 
Jagannath Mishra's festival. So I will speak about Jagannath Mishra's festival. So today we continue our celebration of the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, who descended in the age of Kali in the role of a devotee. He appeared on what we now call Gaur Purnima in the evening of the full moon day in the month of Falun. At the time, there was a lunar eclipse, and as was the tradition, as recommended in the scripture, Hindus immersed themselves in the Ganges and chanted the holy names. Eclipses are considered inauspicious, and to counteract the inauspiciousness, Strict followers of the Vedic scriptures stand in a sacred body of water, a river, a kund or lake, or the sea, and chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So from the very beginning, Lord Chaitanya was surrounded by the chanting of Hare Krishna, and he induced people to chant Hare Krishna more and more. Advaita Acharya and Haridas Thakur danced in ecstasy. And on the plea of giving charity to Brahmins on the occasion of the eclipse, Advaita Acharya and others distributed various gifts. All the devotees were jubilant, and they danced, performed Sankirtan, and gave charity. The whole world was full of auspiciousness and everyone was filled with transcendental bliss. Nariya Udaya Giri Purna Chandra Gora Hari Kripa Kari Haila Udaya Papa Tama Haila Nasha Trija Gera Tera Lasa Jaga Bari Hari Dvani Haya Quote, Thus, by his causeless mercy, the full moon, Gorahari, rose in the district of Nadia, which is compared to Udayagiri, where the first where the sun first becomes visible. His rising in the sky dissipated the darkness of sinful life, and thus the three worlds became joyful and chanted the holy name of the Lord. at C.C. Adi 1398. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a baby, sometimes he would cry, and the elders would try to pacify him in different ways, as people do when a baby cries. They would try to comfort him, distract him, and please him, but nothing worked. Soon they discovered that if they chanted the holy name of Krishna, he would become peaceful and stop crying. So thereafter, whenever he cried, they would chant, and he would immediately become happy. His appearance inspired chanting, and his activities thereafter inspired more chanting. Se Kali Nija Laya Utiya Advaita Raya Nityakare Anandita Mane Harida Selana Sange Hunkara Kirtana Range Hene Nachi Kehanahi Jane. At that time, Sri Advaita Charya Prabhu, in his own house at Shantipur, was dancing in a pleasing mood. Taking Haridas Thakur with him, he danced and loudly chanted Hare Krishna. But why they were dancing, no one could understand. 
that is CC Audi 1399. By his divine will, Krishna arranged for his associates from Goloka Vrindavan to come to earth to join him in his pastimes as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Some associates played the parts of elders and they took birth before he did. Advaita Acharya and Haridas Thakur were elders and they were friends with each other. Advaita Acharya is Mahavishnu and Thakur Haridas is Lord Brahma. And Lord Brahma is a disciple and direct servant of Mahavishnu. So it is natural that they became close. When the news spread that Sachi Mata had given birth to a baby boy, all sorts of respectable Brahmin gentlemen and ladies came with gifts and blessed the newborn child. Even the wives of the demigods came, disguised as the wives of Brahmins, and presented various gifts. The day after the Purnima, there was a great celebration at Jagannath Mishra's home. That day is observed today as the festival of Jagannath Mishra, or the feast of Jagannath Mishra, because to celebrate the birth of his son, he received many visitors and well-wishers and gave presentations to them all. And in the end, they all feasted. Now we shall read from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila, Chapter 13, the advent of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, beginning with the chapter summary. My dear devotees, please listen attentively. The 13th chapter of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita describes Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance. A learned Brahmin named Upendra Misra, who resided in the district of Sri Hatta, was the father of Jagannath Mishra, who came to Navadvip to st study under the direction of Nilambar Chakravarti and then settled there after marrying Nilambar Chakravarti's daughter, Sachi Devi. Sri Sachi Devi gave birth to eight children, all daughters, who died one after another immediately after birth. After her ninth pregnancy, she gave birth to a son who was named Vishwaru. Then, in 1407 Saka era, A.D. 1486, on the full moon evening of the month of Falgun, during the constellation of Simha, Leo, on the horizon, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared as the son of Sri Sachi Devi and Jagannath Mishra. After hearing of the birth of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, learned scholars and Brahmins, bringing many gifts, came to see the newly born baby. Nilambar Chakravarti, who is a great astrologer, immediately prepared a horoscope. And by astrological calculation, he saw that the child was a great personality. This chapter describes the symptoms of this great personality. So here we can see the resemblance between the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya and those of Lord Krishna. In Mathura, Lord Krishna's parents, Vasudev and Devaki, first had six sons, all of whom were killed by Kamsa. Their seventh child was Balaram, but by the arrangement of Yogamaya under Krishna's direction, 
Balaram was transferred from the womb of Devaki to the womb of Rohini in Vrindavan. And thus, Devaki appeared to have had a miscarriage. The eighth child was Krishna. Vasudev did not want Kamsa to kill or try to kill Krishna. And by Yogamaya's influence, all the guards in Kamsa's prison fell asleep and all the locked, locked doors opened. Vasudev then carried baby Krishna across the Yamuna to Gokul. There he found that Yashoda had given birth to a baby girl. But Yashoda was so exhausted from the labor of child and birth, she did not know if she had given birth to a son or a daughter. Vasudev placed baby Krishna on Yashoda's bed and picked up her daughter, whom he carried back to Kamsa's prison in Mathura. As soon as the baby girl was placed in the prison room with Vasudeva Devaki, she began to cry. And Kamsa surmised that Devaki had given birth to a daughter. Earlier, on the occasion of Devaki's wedding, Kamsa had heard a voice from the sky, Akashvani, that said that the eighth son of Devaki would kill him. This child was a girl, but Kamsa was such a demon and was surrounded by such demonic advisors that he thought, let me not take any chances. So he snatched the baby to dash her on a rock and kill her, as he had killed the other six children. But she slipped from his hands and flew into the sky, manifesting her form as the goddess Durga, and said, you fool, the person who will kill you has already taken birth elsewhere. The person who will kill you has already taken birth elsewhere is a striking statement because from the account so far, Krishna had taken birth in Krishna's prison in Mathura. But Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, as quoted by Srila Prabhupada, cites evidence from within Srimad Bhagavatam and from other Puranas, such as the Harivamsa, that Yashoda actually gave birth to twins, a boy and a girl. The girl was an expansion of Yogamaya, and the boy was the original Krishna. When Vasudev carried Vasudev Krishna to Gokul, the Vasudev Krishna entered into the original Krishna and Vasudev carried the baby girl back to Mathura. Here in Chaitanya Leela, we find that Sachi Devi gave birth to eight daughters and all of them died. Then finally she gave birth to a son, Vishwaru. At an early age, Vishwarup left home and took sannyas. And so for all material purposes, he was dead. Srila Prabhupada said that sannyas means civil death. The day on which Vishwarup took sannyas is called Vishwarup Mahotsav. The same day on which Srila Prabhupada took sannyas some 400 years later. In any case, it was a great occasion that Sachi Devi had given birth to a boy and all the devotees from the area, such as Adwaita Chari and his wife Sita and Srivas Thakur and his wife Malini came and brought gifts and offerings and offered blessings to the new child. Text 100. Deki Uparagahasi Sigra Ganga Gati Asi Anande Karila Ganga Snana Pana Uparaga Chale Abanara Manu Bale Ramane Radila Dana Dana Translation 
seeing the lunar eclipse and laughing. Both Advaita Charya and Haridas Thakur immediately went to the bank of the Ganges and bathed in the Ganges in great tribulation. Taking advantage of the occasion of the lunar eclipse, Advaita Charya, by his own mental strength, distributed various types of charity to the Brahmins. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. It is the customs of Hindus to give charity to the poor as much as possible during the time of a lunar or solar eclipse. Advaita Acharya, therefore, taking advantage of the eclipse, distributed many varieties of charity to the Brahmins. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a statement in the 10th canto, 3rd chapter, verse 11, that when Krishna took his birth, Vasudeva immediately took advantage of this moment and distributed 10,000 cows to the Brahmanas. It is customary among Hindus that at the time a child is born, especially a male child, the parents distribute great charity and jubilation. Advaita Acharya was actually interested in distributing charity because of Lord Chaitanya's birth at the time of the lunar eclipse. People could not understand, however, why Advaita Acharya was giving such a great variety of things in charity. He did so not because of the lunar eclipse, but because of the Lord's taking birth at that moment. He distributed charity exactly as Vasudev did at the time of Lord Krishna's appearance. So, in Vedic culture, householders observe all auspicious ceremonies by giving in charity. They are happy, and they know they are happy by the grace of the Lord and the devotees. And in their happiness, they want to give charity and receive more blessings. When the children become adults and observe their own birth anniversaries, they also give charity. A friend of the Juhu Temple, who was, a very, who was very strict about Vedic traditions, did not like that we celebrated birthdays by giving presents to the birthday boy or girl. He said, birthday means the birthday person gives charity. And he didn't like birthday cakes either. He said, you should distribute Sandesh, Rasgula, or Galam Jaman. Those are real sweets. Text 101. Jagat Ananda Maya Deki Mane Savishmaya Tare Tore Kahe Haridasa Tomara Aichungaranga Mora Mana Prasanana Deki Kichu Kare Ache Basa Translation. When he saw that the whole world was jubilant, Haridas Thakur, his mind astonished, directly and indirectly expressed himself to Advaita Acharya. Your dancing and distributing charity are very pleasing to me. I can understand that there is some special purpose in these actions. Text 102. Acharya Ratna and Srivas Thakur were, were overwhelmed with joy, and immediately they went to the bank of the Ganges to take bath in the water of the Ganges. Their minds full of happiness, they chanted the Hare Krishna mantra and gave charity by mental strength. 103. In this way, all the devotees, Wherever they were situated, in every city and every country, danced, performed Sankirtan, and gave charity by mental strength. On the plea of the lunar eclipse, their minds overwhelmed with joy. 104. All sorts of respectable Brahmin gentlemen and ladies 
carrying plates filled with various gifts, came with their presentations. Seeing the newborn child, whose form resembled natural glaring gold, all of them with happiness offered their blessings. 104. Dressing themselves as the wives of Brahman, all the celestial ladies, including the wives of Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Lord Nishingadev, King Indra, and Vasista Muni, along with Ramba, the dancing girl of heaven, came there with varieties of gifts. Purport. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a newly born baby, he was visiting, visited by the neighboring ladies, most of whom were the wives of respectable Brahmins. In the dress of Brahmins' wives, celestial ladies, such as the wives of Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, also came to see the newborn child. Ordinary people saw them as neighborhood respectable Brahmin ladies. But actually, they were all celestial ladies dressed in that way. So Savitri is the wife of Lord Brahma. Gauri is the wife of Lord Shiva. Saraswati here is mentioned as the wife of Lord Nishingadev. And Sachi is the wife of King Indra. They all disguise themselves as Brahmin ladies looking like the ladies of the neighborhood, and came to offer respects to the newborn baby. 106. In outer space, all the demigods, including the inhabitants of Gandharva Loka, Siddha Loka, and Charna Loka, offered their prayers and danced with musical songs and beating of drums. Similarly, in Navadweep City, all the professional dancers, musicians, and blessers gathered together, dancing in great jubilation. Abort. As there are professional singers, dancers, and reciters of prayers in the heavenly planets, so in India still there are professional dancers, givers of blessings, and singers all of whom assemble together during householder ceremonies, especially marriages and birth ceremonies. So uh, Vedic culture is very beautiful and highly elevated. Even now in India, the culture is there, though not as much as before. Once when I was in Bombay in December, I visited an old friend, a very nice devotee who was related to the Birlas. And it just so happened that there was an engagement ceremony in the Birla family from the mother's side. Sri Brindratan Malta, who was a very good friend of Srila Prabhupada's and ours, had married Seth R. D. Birla's daughter, and their son's daughter was about to be engaged. So I went to the engagement reception, and there I met a bhajan singer named Purushottam Das Jalota. When I first went to India, in 1970, he was very popular. He sang bhajans in aristocratic Hindu's homes and gave lessons in voice and harmony. As he grew older, his son, as happens, became his apprentice and also began to sing bhajans and play harmonium. So we invited his son, Anup, who was relatively unknown then, to perform at our auditorium in Juhu. At the engagement reception, Purushottam Dastralota approached me 
He's about 78 now and was wearing a traditional Hindu jacket and cap. After we spoke for some time, he made an indication and said, Anup is there, and he tried to call him. But because his voice was not so loud, his son Anup could not hear him. I said, that's all right, I'll go and see him. I guess the father wanted me to bless and encourage his son. Anup remembered his first performance at the Iskan Auditorium in Juhu. I didn't usually attend such performances, but somehow that evening, near the end of the performance, I felt drawn into the auditorium and had found a seat toward the back and sat down. The whole atmosphere had been surcharged. I can't explain it. And he had sung with such devotion that his words and voice entered the people's minds and hearts. It had been a very special performance, and the devotees had recorded it and produced an audio cassette that they would distribute on Sankirtan, and it had become a hit. Many people would come and ask for Anup Jalota's tape. When I met Anup at the reception, he remembered that night. He said that when he had entered the auditorium, he had not been sure whether or not he would pursue a career as a singer. He had prayed, Lord Krishna, I am yours. Whatever you want, you can do. If you want me to pursue this career, you can make me a success. If you don't, that's all right, whatever you wish. And he remarked that it was because of his performance in the ISKCON Auditorium and the recording of it that he had become a success as a singer. I knew that was the case, but I didn't want to say it. But he also knew it, and he said it, and it was true. That culture and that mood are becoming rare, that mood of devotion, of surrender, of dependence on the Lord, but they are still there. Now we return to the description of Jagannath Mishra's festival. Text 107. No one could understand who was coming and who was going, who was dancing and who was singing, nor could they understand one another's language. Yet all unhappiness and lamentation were immediately dissipated and people became all jubilant. Thus, Jagannath Mishra was also overwhelmed with joy. 108. Chandrasekhar Acharya and Sri Thakur both came to Jagannath Mishra and drew his attention in various ways. They performed the ritualistic ceremonies prescribed at the time of birth according to religious principles. Jagannath Mishra also gave varieties of charity. 109. Whatever riches Jagannath Mishra collected in the form of gifts and presentations, and whatever he had in his house, he distributed among the Brahmins, professional singers, dancers, bhattas, and the poor. He honored them all by giving them riches in charity. 110. The wife of Srivas Thakur, whose name was Malini, accompanied by the wife of Chandrasekhar and other ladies, came there in great happiness to worship the baby with paraphernalia, such as vermilion, turmeric, oil, fused rice, bananas, and coconuts. Report. We see that 500 years ago, at the birth of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all these ceremonies were performed rigidly. But at present, such ritualistic performances hardly ever take place. Generally, a pregnant mother is sent to the hospital, and as soon as her child is born, he is washed with an antiseptic, and this concludes everything. 
So the parents and other elders did whatever they could to ensure the well-being of the child in all respects. They knew that the purpose of the child's life was to serve and please God and that the child's success in all respects depended on the mercy of God and his devotees. 111. One day shortly after Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born, Advaita Charya's wife, Sita Devi, who is worshipable by the whole world, took her husband's permission and went to see that topmost child with all kinds of gifts and presentations. On 12, she brought different kinds of golden ornaments, including armlets, necklaces, anklets, and bangles for the hands. 113. There was also tiger nails set in gold, waist decorations of silk and lace, ornaments for the hands and legs, nicely printed silken saris, and a child's garment also made of silk. Many other riches, including gold and silver coins, were presented to the child. Text 114 to 116. Riding in a palanquin covered with cloth and accompanied by maid surgeons, servants, Sita Takarani came to the house of Jagannath Mishra, bringing with her many auspicious articles such as fresh grass, paddy, gorochana, turmeric, kumkum, and sandalwood. All these presentations filled a large basket. When Sita Takarani came to the house of Sachi Devi, bringing with her many kinds of edibles, dresses, and other gifts, she was astonished to see the newborn child, for she appreciated that except for a difference in color, the child was directly Krishna of Gokul himself. Seeing the transcendental bodily effulgence of the child, each of his nicely constructed limbs full of auspicious signs and resembling a form of gold, Sita Takarani was very pleased. And because of her maternal affection, she felt as if her heart was melting. She blessed the newborn child by placing fresh grass and paddy on her head and saying, May you be blessed with a long duration of life. But being afraid of ghosts and witches, she gave the child the name Nimai. Report by Srila Prabhupada. Yakini and Sakini are two companions of Lord Shiva and his wife, who are supposed to be extremely inauspicious, having been born of ghostly life. It is believed that such inauspicious living creatures cannot go near a neem tree. At least medically, it is accepted that neem wood is extremely antiseptic. And formerly, it was customary to have a neem tree in front of one's house. On very large roads in India, especially in Uttar Pradesh, there are hundreds and thousands of neem trees. Neem wood is so antiseptic that the Ayurvedic science uses it to cure leprosy. Medical scientists have extracted the active principle of the neem tree, which is called margosic acid. Neem is used for many purposes, especially to brush the teeth. In Indian villages, 90% of the people use neem twigs for this purpose. Because of all the antiseptic effects of the neem tree, and because Lord Chaitanya was born beneath a neem tree, Sita Takarani gave the Lord the name Nimai. 
Later in his youth, he was celebrated as Nimai Pundit. And in the neighborhood villages, he was also called by that name, although his real name was Vishwambar. So uh, Vishwambar means one who maintains the universe. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita 89.7 describes how Lord Chaitanya appreciated that name. Prabhu kahe ame vishvambara nama dari nama sartha kakaya yadi preme vishvabari. Lord Chaitanya thought, my name is Vishwambar, one who maintains the universe. Its meaning will be actualized if I can fill the whole universe with love of God. So in my youth, uh, my dentist was a family friend who had served in India during World War II. And as he worked on my teeth, he would tell me about his experiences in India as a dentist in the American army. He remarked that he had always seen the native Indians squatting along the roads, brushing their teeth with twigs. As part of his work as a dentist, he would treat Indians too. And he said that when he looked into their mouths, he was astonished to see the most beautiful white teeth he had ever seen without any cavities. And all these people did was brush their teeth with twigs. Text 118. On the day the mother and son bathed and left the maternity home, Sita Thakurani gave them all kinds of ornaments and garments and then also honored Jagannath Mishra. Then Sita Thakurani, being honored by Mother Sachi Devi and Jagannath Mishra was greatly happy within her mind, and she returned home. Report by Srila Prabhupada. On the fifth day from the birth of the child, and also on the ninth day, the mother bathes either in the Ganges or in another sacred place. This is called niskramana, or the ceremony of coming out of the maternity home. Nowadays, the maternity home is a hospital, but formerly in every respectable home, one room was set aside as a maternity home where children would take birth. And on the ninth day, after the birth of a child, the mother would come into the regular rooms in the ceremony called Niskramana. Of the ten purificatory processes, Niskramana is one. Formerly, especially in Bengal, the higher castes observed four months after the birth of a child as a quarantine. At the end of the fourth month, the mother could see the sunrise. Later, the higher castes, namely the Brahmins, Kshatriyas, and Vaishas, observed only 21 days as a quarantine, whereas the Sudras had to observe 30 days. For the sections of society known as Kartabhaja and Satima, the mother of the child was immediately purified after the quarantine by throwing of Hari Nuta, small pieces of sweet meat in Sankirtan. Sachi Devi and Jagannath Misra with the newborn child were honored by Sita Takarani. Similarly, while Sita Sakarani was returning home, she was also honored by Sachi Devi and Jagannath Misra. That was the system in respectable families of Bengal. So uh, Srila Prabhupada was also born in a separate home under a jackfruit tree that belonged to his mother's parents. 
Once, His Holiness Radhanath Swami and I visited that place in South Calcutta, saw the tree under which Srila Prabhupada had been born, and visited the Radha Krishna temple that Prabhupada's mother had frequented, imagining how she and the rest of family must have prayed for the welfare of the new child, whom they named Abhai Chara, one who is fearless, having taken shelter at Lord Krishna's lotus feet. Text 119. In this way, Mother Sachi Devi and Jagannath Mishra, having obtained a son who is the husband of the goddess of fortune, had all their desires fulfilled. Their house was always filled with riches and grains. As they saw the beloved body of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, day after day, their pleasure increased. So there's, there's more, but uh, for the sake of time, uh, we'll come to a conclusion here. Text 122. In this way, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, out of his causeless mercy, made his advent in the home of Sachi Devi. Lord Chaitanya is very merciful to anyone who hears the narration of his birth. And such a person attains the lotus feet of the Lord. Text 124. Taking on my head as my own property, the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Dityananda Prabhu, Acharya Advaita Chandra, Swarup Damodar, Rupa Goswami, and Raghunath Das Goswami. I, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, have described the advent of Sri Chaitanya. Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. Jagannath Mishra's festival Ki Jai. Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai. So my dear devotees, thank you for listening so patiently and attentively. And now if any of you have any questions, or any comments, or any uh, reflections that you want to share, you can raise your hand, your virtual hand, or your physical hand. Hare Krishna. And the, the, the devotees who are on Zoom, as, as far as possible, please put on your cameras so we can see your moonlike faces. It's more personal. Oh, so nice to see so many of you. Wonderful. So Hari Vallabhi Dasi, your hand is raised. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Wish you a very happy festival of Jagannath Mishra and Thank such a day. Maharaj, my question is, um, is uh, such a Devi in Krishna Leela, is she Mother Yashoda or Mother Devaki? Oh. Um, and the same for the father, Jagannath Mishra. Yes, I would say they are uh, Vasudev and Devaki. Okay. Thank you. Nice to see you. Same here, Mark. How are you adjusting to life in America? By your mercy, I'm carrying on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good.
Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, in this uh, six sons of Mother Devaki, they were Marichi. What about those daughters of Mother Sachi? Do you have any, any history behind them? Oh. Well, I'm sure there must be, but I'm not aware of it right now. But yeah, I'm sure if we did a little research, we could find out. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. It has been a long time. We have been waiting for this day. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I was in India for five yes. months. Uh, India and Mauritius. All right. So if there are no more questions or comments uh, I think that we can conclude now with Vaishnav Pranam let us offer our respectful okay. obeisances unto all the Vaishnav devotees of the Lord who are just like desire trees who can fulfill the desires of everyone and are full of compassion for the fallen conditioned souls. Vanchakalpa Trubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhavicha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnava Bhavanam Anantakoti Vaishnava Vrindiki Jai Shiva Prabhupada Ki Jai Gorba Vrindiki Jai See you next month, Maharaj. Yes, for the Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj, Thank you, Maharaj for your association. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome back, Maharaj. So, shall we end now? Yes, yes Maharaj. <laughs> Are you going to end it or uh, do you want me to leave first? We can end it, Maharaj. Okay. Great. Thank you, Maharaj. I'll go as to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you. I'll go as to Maharaj. Maharaj, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj.